Hi, this is David Bonacciolo. Welcome to video 3B, which is the second of four videos devoted to the markets and products topic in the 2012 FRM, a part one topic, of course. And that means we continue with three chapters in John Hull's textbook. Four, five, and six are interest rates. Chapter five is the application of the cost of carry model. So that's our basic approach to determining forward and futures prices. And then chapter six on interest rate features, which has traditionally been a difficult chapter requiring um, a little bit of extra time for some new candidates to process. So uh, four key chapters from the very important John Hall. And as usual, I have learning spreadsheets associated fully five with this particular video. The first four that I've tagged is highly relevant if you're using spreadsheets to complement your learning. And so 3B1 is compound frequency. I consider this key foundation, the ability to translate discrete to continuous comp, uh, rates of return and vice versa. 3B2 also key, the extraction of forward rates from spot rates. 3B3 illustrates Hull's duration. So in the FRM, we're exposed to duration and convexity for the bond asset class in both Hall. Tuckman's uh, more gives us more coverage, but it does come up in Hall as well. 3B4, this is the cost of carry model um, so that we use to price the fu uh, forwards on uh, and futures on, contra on commodities, including as a special application interest rate parity. And 3B5 is a workbook, a collection of worksheets, including some of the difficult, uh, that illustrate some of the difficult ideas in Hull's own chapter six on interest rate futures. So we start with chapter four on interest rates. And so again, this is that, uh, that uh, key building block that I really uh, implore you not to skip. The ability here to calculate a value of investment using daily, weekly, and monthly compounding. So, <clears throat> This is Hull's notation, and given the fact that we can take a current value of some asset A and compound it continuously, I hope that you're starting to recognize this as continuous compounding. Taking the value of the asset today, compounding it at a continuous rate over n number of years, very elegant and compact way to compound forward. And then we could say that will be equal to taking that same value and compounding it discreetly at the discrete rate where we have M periods per year. So if M is 2, it's semi-annual compounding. If M is 12, it's monthly compounding. So we have several flavors of the discrete compounding. If we equalize these, then notice we have two formulas here, <coughs> excuse me, that among will be among the most useful formulas to us in the FRM, if not in finance generally. The ability to take as an input the continuous rate of return and solve for the associated or equivalent discrete rate of return. So notice we have the one value here and we can solve for an equivalent semi-annual, monthly, daily, any number of discrete. And we can do this in the other direction as well. If we take the discrete rate divided by the number of periods, add one, take the natural log of that, multiply by the M again, we end up with the associated continuous rate. And so for example, We can firstly observe the difference here. We take a rate, now notice, so we can see this in a word problem as 8% per annum. If we read 8% per annum, it really doesn't tell us the compound frequency. Over here, we take $1 received in the future, in this case, 10 years in the future, $1 received in 10 years, discounted at a 8% per annum rate, semi-annually or twice per year. This is how we would discount that discreetly. So we assume